The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. This is Gene Quinn. Thank you for joining us here today again for another in our webinar series. Today we have a very interesting webinar. It's a little bit of a different kind of a webinar for us. We're going to talk about uh, the business of patents, the business of uh, IP, some of the decisions that go into uh, acquiring a portfolio, when you might want to acquire a portfolio, and how you can use patent data in order to see what may be coming and what should be coming and the combinations that make sense. And it's uh, probably a, a business person's webinar, maybe even an investor's webinar, uh, and a uh, very interesting topic, I think, uh, chasing unicorns, how to spot acquisition targets early on. We're going to take a look at the Zook and Amazon uh, deal uh, so we can see what you could have seen. And we're also going to talk about what you may be able to see moving forward. So I'm happy to have you here joining us here today. Um, so let's move forward. Uh, I'm sure we'll, the audience will continue to grow. Uh, but as always, you will all get a copy of this webinar sent to you both a recording and a copy of the slides and you will also be able to access the slides if you so desire right now if you're listening to this on the computer and you have your go to webinar control panel open you can download the slides on your computer right now just clicking on the handouts tab and uh You'll see the handout right there and you can download it. This is also where you'll be able to send us questions. I'll be moderating the questions as we go along and I'll try and interject the questions as appropriate during the presentation. And we'll try and save a little bit of time at the end to get to any questions that we were unable to weave into the presentation organically. So if you have questions, Please don't be shy. Please send us your questions. We always like to hear from you and try and make this webinar something that's meaningful for everybody. Um, now, before we get going any further, what I'd like to do is I would like to uh, specifically thank LexisNexis IP and Patent Site, who have been great sponsors of ours for a long time, and they make it possible to bring this webinar series to you. So if you find a need for their solutions that appreciated it, you please contact them and see and ask for a test drive. Um, LexisNexis IP has a lot of solutions and Patent Site is gonna demonstrate some of the capability of their uh, analytic tool, which when you look at what they can do, it's really rather amazing. And we have with us today, William Mansfield, who is the Director of Consulting and Consumer Success at Patent Site, and Patent Site is a Lexus, Texas company. And he will go through the data today in uh, detail and talk to us about what the patent data actually shows when you know how to, to access it, when you have the filters to be able to go through this massive, all these terabytes of data. And I am gonna uh, play color commentator and ask questions and moderate because I uh, am fascinated more so than anything by the power of this data when you have the proper tools to peel the layers of the onion, so to speak. And William, that's probably a good place to bring you in, at least initially, to get your preliminary thoughts. I don't know whether you think about this as peeling the layers of the onion or what analogy you might make, but um, when you're dealing with terabytes of data, uh, getting to the nuggets of actionable information is is difficult to say the least. But when we see what can be obtained, it really is eye opening. I mean, one of the things, and I don't know, I can't remember whether you have this slide. I don't think we have this slide in the deck. But one of the eye opening things that I remember from one of our first webinars that we did together, you and I, was when you showed that if Swatch had been paying attention and had the right data analytics, they would have been able to see Apple was preparing to get into the Apple right. Watch area, you know, a decade before their first product hit the market. 
Yeah, I think no, that's and... our uh, our number one example, right? We use this uh, a lot, and a lot of our webinars, I think we've we've touched on it, but it's uh, it's just such a strong example of of you know how taking the same information and looking at it through a different scope it really really does change what you can what you can tell from it. And the thing that I think, and I, I want you to just take an open question here in a minute, but just riff with me if you will for a second. I think what makes this interesting is we're going to go through and we're going to see a lot of graphs. And when you're talking about this information on, on a lot of levels, um, and let me take a step back before we come, I, I want to cascade here for a minute and get it all out. A lot of the times in these webinars and in other webinars, the question that keeps coming up over and over again is how do I get the information to my manager, my manager's manager, to my chief patent counsel, to the chief IP counsel, to the board, uh, to the CFO, in a way that they can actually understand and uh, appreciate what I'm seeing, right. understand the data. And, you know, graphs and charts are just such a good, quick, easy way when you're dealing with professionals that have, you know, maybe 10, 15 seconds to capture their interest to want more. Exactly, right? I mean, these people are, are not gonna sit and and look through page after page of, of patents. I can I can totally understand the the view that you need to read the underlying uh, patents for the for the analysis, but we shouldn't expect the board members to be doing that, right? They they have they have teams, they have you know the people listening in the call to to support them to to give them the right information to make those decisions, and they they need summarized information in order to fully grasp what is going on and and see the path forward and and for you to make the point about you know what is the path forward that we can we can see in the in the analysis so um and i think particularly in the the world of patents and uh and even in in r d it can be difficult to to get the point across to the upper management to the decision makers that that this is something we need to invest in or or this is a technology we need to develop or this is a, a person that is um, a threat to us because if we if we bombard them with the technical details or if we we um, you know cover them in a avalanche of, of patents then they, they they don't know how to process that information most often these people are, are business people making decisions um, on you know just just some numbers or graphs and then this is what they're used to consuming and so we need to speak their language in order to make our point compelling um and, and that's really yeah, what we that, try and do speak their language that that's the thing that you know you keep hearing over and over again that's the way to get to these folks all right so now let me ask you the very open-ended question <laughs> what is it that you think people should have in mind as we start to talk about you know chasing unicorns what is it that you want them to thematically concentrate on or or, or bring to mind before we start going through the slides that you have prepared for them today? Well, I mean, often we make the point about intangible assets, right? That we always make this, this discussion about more and more of companies' value is, is made up of intangible assets. And uh, there's lots of statistics around this, but um, these are really, really hard to, to measure. I mean, intangible assets can be everything from, you know, uh, patents and IP and 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 things like this, trade secrets, but they can be, you know, a company's contracts or, or other aspects of that. But so much of that is behind closed doors, right? We're not going to really find out what someone's contracts are or their trade secrets are. Um, so there are only a few windows where we can actually say, okay, here we have information on this company, particularly, you know, small startups of which there are many. Um, to be able to make a decision on on whether you know this is a technology or the way that this company is developing this technology is something that we need to get uh, engaged with, and um, patents are like I say one of the key windows that allow us to do that. So even if we are you know already a, a patent attorney, already you know invested in patents, then patent analytics and the information we can get from that is a key way forward. But I mean, even if we're not, even if we are in competitive intelligence, then um, patents can provide such an important uh, insight. 
Yeah. No, I, I, I agree. And I, I think we should probably try and get to the slides here because I think once we look at what, what is, uh, what can be understood, you know, and again, sort of along this line, I, and again, they were just talking, like he was listening to CNBC yesterday, and they were talking about Moderna, and it's had a 25% pullback, and I think it's still a buying opportunity, and you should jump in, and I'm not giving any advice, because the last bit of advice for investing you want is from me, uh, because <laughs> we, did, we did a presentation, and we talked about how strong Moderna's portfolio was, and right. it was, it was it was huge. I mean, it was, it was like off the chart, kind of strong. And I thought to myself, you know, maybe I should just take a flyer and buy some Moderna stock. And I didn't do it. You know, and, our, you know, our this sales was, director and, actually did. <laughs> he, he followed did. up. Good yeah, yeah, him. yeah. And he was telling me afterwards. So uh, oh yeah, he God, owes, because... um, I think that was Dirk, right? Who was on the web, and I was like, I owe Dirk a beer because uh, he made me some. Yeah, money. well, good for him <laughs> because you know back when. We, and it wasn't, it was, it was all public information. It was not, I mean, we just said, you know, right. that's got a really great portfolio. And we were looking at it in terms of COVID. It was after, you know, and then they just went crazy. And, and so maybe we'll see something like that here today. Who knows? But yeah. So let's just get into it. So, um, yeah, let's, let's start off with just something, something simple in here. And, and really, this is just to, to start off the discussion. Right. Um, and then we can look at the details, but. We're going to talk about autonomous driving, right? This is the the, the area which uh, Amazon is is looking into with the with the Zooks um, acquisition, and obviously an area that they want to grow, and it's an area of massive increasing innovation. And and simply this this is just illustrating this that in you know it's an area where in 2012 2010 was was non-existent and multiple fold increases in terms of activity in the last 10 years and and year on year that is only growing you can see the the 2018-19 gap here is is greater than everyone before so it's a massive growth industry and there's a lot of activity from the big players from the startups um, and so there's a lot moving, there's a lot changing, and we need to cut through all of that information to be able to make decisions like Amazon has done here with their, their Zooks acquisition about, you know, is this something we want to bring on now? Is this something we're worried about later? Um, can we take advantage of the situation that we, we find ourselves in? So, um, yeah, I would, I would go from this to the next slide and then say, okay, let's imagine that we were Amazon. And um, these these kind of deals they don't happen over overnight, right? Amazon didn't didn't look up Zooks at the beginning of the year and, and decide to acquire it the next day. It probably took quite some some months of um, you know finding them, deciding they were the right way forward, making the case internally, and and moving forward with it. So a lot of the analysis that we look at in here will be looking at data from from 2018. To say, okay, what was the state of the industry in terms of innovation at the end of 2018? So we can kind of do a fair assessment on what would have Amazon been looking at if they decided to, to acquire Zooks. The same gene, like you were mentioning about the, the Apple Swatch example that we, we use so often, what then would have been the information available to Swatch back in 2011 with, with Apple building on them. In this case, what was the information back in 2018? And at the end, we'll, we'll look at, you know, what's the status today and, and what looks like the future might be. So I would, I would jump to the next slide and we can, you know, start that discussion. So, so this is then the, the field in 2018 and the, the, the analyses which have 2018 uh, which are that have that 2018 in the background that I hope everyone can can see. So this was the the competitive position for the field of of autonomous driving, and um, we've used the the autonomous driving definition provided to us by the the Swiss Patent Office IP Search, who's one of our partners, um, who um, yeah offer search services among among other things. Um, so it's a you know, independent view of, of what the field of autonomous driving looks like. And then we have the, the top 10 and, and a bit players in here. And you can see the ranking on the right-hand side here. So you can see, you know, Alphabet being, being number one, 
there on the right and the the big blue bubble and and the others going down and we've we've shoehorned in a couple of extras in there you can see amazon is actually 28 apple is is 50 and and tesla we've we've pushed in at, at 209 um just to to give us some reference points in there so that's why i say oh, so it's 25 ish um and i think if we were what amazon in this in this situation and we were going to go down this list and think okay who is acquirable what are the top things in autonomous driving what are the top companies the top players and and who is it we could acquire i think if we went down this list literally the first one we get to would be zooks so i mean we're not going to acquire alphabet or ford or intel or volvo or baidu um, and when we get down to to 24 to, to zooks it's the it's the first startup in this list so clearly playing with the big players immediately that we can see from that, even though they don't have a, a big portfolio, right? And um, yeah, I think this is the, the interesting view from this. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, normally the question comes um, from someone at some point and, the, and there is a slide after this on it, but I, I think we can we can skip it a little bit. But, but how do we determine this um, this list? How do we determine which are the, the top players in here? Um, and, and how should we order this? Because if we were just to look by, by portfolio size, for example, that's a, a traditional way of looking. How many patents do each of these companies have in the field? In this case, Toyota would have been uh, number one. Um, and and Zooks very likely might not have been on the list at all, right? There's a there's a lot of gap between Toyota and and Zooks. And um, so if we were just going to do it by portfolio size, they, we might not have found them at all. So some way we need to um, measure the value of these patents that are that are in there because there's there's so much out there particularly in coming from from China there's there's huge amounts of filings we we did some 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 country level analysis uh, recently and and China's just from their number of filings is is increasing to be the majority source of all patents um catching up like from in the last 20 years going from nothing to being like the major economy in terms of patents just in sheer numbers and of course not all of that is 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 quality not all of that is, is something that we need to be worried about there's only going to be a subset of that so we need to identify what those what that subset is that's that's actually relevant right um and and this is what we we do here with the with the competitive impact um so this and the uh, the bubble size, which is the the product of the axes, the the competitive impact times by the portfolio size. This is the the patent asset index, our, our our patent strength metric, and and that's what we're sorting by. So we're looking, you know, which companies have cumulatively the strongest portfolios. Um, and maybe just to very shortly explain this competitive impact, then this is um, from uh, scientific research, looking at what the the factors are that primarily contribute to a patent's value, or how can we determine that? And these are the number of citations a patent receives, and and how broadly it is protected. Um, and we use these these two factors to develop sub indicators to to calculate the competitive impact in here. Um, and and there we can see Zooks has a small portfolio, a portfolio that is uh, you know, a, a little bit bigger than than Amazon's, not by too much, but very high quality, and and this is why it comes up in our in our analysis. Okay, well, William, I uh, I've been uh, silent here because I noticed we were getting some um, questions from people about the audio, and I've been trying to effort that on my end. Is this sound better? Are we getting any better audio here? Can you hear me? Good. Uh, I think it's it's okay. It's a little bit uh, jittery. Um, I'm not sure if if mine is the same or or uh... Your, yours is a little jittery too. And I'm trying to figure. I have good. Uh, I've been doing running speed tests on our end and trying to figure it out. 
and our speed is going fine. So I don't really know exactly what is going on. Um, exactly. So um, maybe we could just try and power through. Um, it, it may be um, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we're getting people say it sounds slightly better than the last few minutes. So we can just we can just power on. Um, we do have a, a, a substantive question here from slide number five. Why are you comparing companies in slide five using the competitive impact? Yeah, so um, so like I mentioned, this this competitive impact is the um, quality metric. So here we're looking at what is the average quality of the, the portfolios um, that these companies hold. And so this chart is showing us the kind of strategic position between having a large portfolio and having a, a high quality portfolio. And, and typically, uh, smaller companies, um, those of, of interest anyway, will have um, higher quality, um, albeit smaller portfolios that we can see Zooks here in, for example. Whereas the as people build out their portfolios and, and need to have assets, not just covering the core technology, that is uh, essential for what their business is, but as they you know, expand and need to further protect their, their ability to operate as a business, they will file more and more patents and, and this will inevitably reduce the quality. And, and you know, that's why Toyota, Ford, GM, they have a, a lower quality, albeit larger portfolios. And I mean, for reference here, the, the average competitive impact is one. So we can see all of these portfolios are significantly above the average for um, all the patents globally. But in terms of, of leaders in um, new technologies uh, that autonomous driving is, that's to be expected that these companies need to have very high quality assets in order to effectively compete in this new industry. So, um, I mean, the the next slide does does talk about this this shortly, and and we can put it up on the the screen. But I I would propose not to go through all the details of it as we we have done in in other webinars, right, Gene? That we've um, we've done, and and actually we've gone through it in in some level of detail. So I would propose if if people are really interested, then then they can go and and have a look at these uh, earlier webinars that we we've done. Yeah, we do have one question that asks, yep. how, are you, how are you measuring uh, patent portfolio quality? And, yep. and that sort of is mentioned here a little bit, I think, right? Yeah, um, so we looked at the competitive impact in the last uh, slide. That's, that's on the bottom right of, of this, um, this slide, which is the, the strength of an individual patent family, the quality of an individual patent family. Um, and this is calculated through two submetrics using um, citations, so so how many citations a patent family receives from from later patents, um, and that's something that's that's not just used for for patents. It's it's commonly used in scientific literature. The the system that that Google uses, PageRank, in order to determine uh, the quality of search results or the relevance of search results, is based on a similar premise as well. The links between the pages driving the the relevance of the individual pages. In that case, it's it's HTML and pages and um, hyperlinks, and in here it's it's citations and and patents. Um, and we do some corrections for this as well. So there are other factors that affect the number of citations a patent receives, the, the, the age, the patent office, the technology domain in which the patent is filed. And the other aspect of this is the market coverage, how broadly a patent is protected. So of course, in order to have some uh, benefit from the patent, we need to protect it in some jurisdictions. And if we were, for example, to only protect our patent in say, I don't know, Belgium, that would be a pretty limited coverage um, and, and likely not give us a lot of utility out of that patent to only protect in a small geographical region. So, I mean, that's the, the, the summary of the metrics, but maybe we can, we, can, we can dive into the analysis a little bit more. <clears throat> yeah, well, what, what, I can, what I would just say here too is just for folks who, um, and I do think that it's important that if you really have questions, we've done an entire webinar on on this, but 
uh, for those who are new to, to this uh, approach by patent site, th this is used by the European Commission for uh, determining whether or not mergers and acquisitions are going to violate antitrust laws in Europe. So they have thoroughly vetted it and it has, uh, it's open source. So you can go and look at what they're doing and decide whether or not it meets your own uh, requirements, but it has met the requirements of uh, Fortune 500 companies and the European antitrust regulation authorities. So it, it, this is not just something where somebody has made uh, choices without some meaningful um, distinctions. And, and like you say, you know, it being open source is really important. The, the fact that you can go and, and understand what's in there, um, like we spoke about in the beginning, you know, talking the, the executive's language, we need to be able to explain to them why we think something, why we think this is a, a high quality patent, for example. And if, and if that's not fundamentally explainable, then, then they're not going to give us the, the time of day, most likely. Um, so that is a, a really important factor. So um, yeah, maybe we should uh, we should talk a little bit more about um, about Zooks. So um, going beyond, you know, we've we've we are Amazon. We've we've looked at the the quality versus quantity charts in the in the last analysis. We've found that okay, Zooks seems to be a a, a reasonable candidate. Maybe we could have a look at what they're actually uh, investing in. What is it that 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 Zooks is is doing? So here we've we've broken down the the Zooks portfolio um, to look at what are the areas which they are strong in. And on the the, the left bar, the the grey bar is the portfolio size again, the the number of patent families. And on the right hand side is the the patent asset index, the cumulative quality of all of these. So we can see the areas not just where they um, not just where they have many patents, but where they have um, strong patents, for example. So, I mean, they don't have a, a large portfolio. So, so a lot of these are, are one. And we can see, um, you know, banks of, of this where they have just, just one patent. And there's a few areas where they have uh, multiple patents. And in those areas where there's just one patent, we can see the, the, the quality can vary quite dramatically. Right in terms of you know how strong those particular assets are, um, and this makes a big difference to to understand where's something that we we want to focus on. Um, so if we were looking at this from the the point of view of of Amazon, then we can see a, a couple of areas where um, Zooks has has particular strength in this. Uh, driving assistance and signaling and, and cruise control. So uh, these are a lot of um, names that go towards uh, autonomous driving. I mean, these come from, from our uh, automated uh, clustering engine. So an, an AI that, that reads through the patents and clusters them together and provides us with, with namings to go with that, to understand that. Um, so they can be a little bit summarized sometimes. So for, for signaling, for example, which is the strongest area of, of Zooks, um, this is not just say what your indicators are doing on your car, but also how your car is then, um, to use the terminology, signaling to the environment what it's going to do. So this doesn't just include uh, indicators, but also the kind of, um, I think it's, referred to as V to X technology, this vehicle to, to everything, uh, connectivity and, and how the vehicle is, is then communicating with say, uh, fixed infrastructure or other vehicles on the road. And the way that it, it communicates and, and signals its intent about what the, the vehicle is planning on doing to the um, other, well, road users and, and other infrastructure around there. Um, so from this, we could start to tell maybe if we're Amazon and we, we know our portfolio already, what are the areas that, that um, we maybe observe that we are missing, maybe areas that we observe that we have gaps in our portfolio, and does it appear that the, the Zooks portfolio um, starts to fill those gaps? So here already in terms of that you know, speaking the, the right language, giving people this, this high level view of, okay, these are the, the high level technologies that, that Zooks have. Does it 
are these areas which we want to, to add to our portfolio? Um, so uh, this is the, the, the view then for, for just Zooks, um, but we can break this up maybe a, a little further. So Amazon would not just be looking at what is the, the status of, of their portfolio, um, and what is the status of the, the Zooks portfolio, but also, you know, what are other players in the field doing and what are areas maybe where they need to solidify their, their holdings. So maybe what we can do then is, is, is move on a little bit from this and say, okay, this is Zooks, that's, that's good to know what, what they are working on. But what we can then do is, is dive a little bit um, and look at not just Zooks, but the other top players that we've identified from our, from our first analysis. What are the areas where, where they have strength? What are the areas where, where Amazon has strength? And, and what are the areas where, where Zooks is, is active? So um, we do have a question about how did you um, determine the different categories? Like for example, vehicle component sources, electrical vehicles, et cetera. Yeah, so um, this comes from a, um, a clustering engine. So um, some of our engineers um, have, have come up with a system of, of categorizing patents into groups. This, this leverages, of course, the categorizations, the, the IPCs and CPCs to some extent, but then very much relies on um, an AI that goes through and creates clusters based on the full text of the patents and then allocates patents to, to those clusters. Um, and, and something that they, they really worked on quite a lot is to avoid a kind of uh, butterfly effect that um, the introduction of, of new patents, so the, the filing and publication of, of new patents don't completely change all of the um, the clusters so that um, because when we're running this kind of machine learning algorithm to, to find what clusters these are in, they're using the pre-existing patents as, as waypoints in order to define that. Um, and as we add more, it has more waypoints and it might decide that, that the, um, the clusters are, are now different. So we put a lot of it, or they put a lot of effort into making sure that these aren't continuously changing, that they can change, but when there is enough momentum to, to do so. So that if we look at analysis today and we look at an analysis in a, in a week or in two weeks or in a year, that we're still going to get pretty much the, the same clusters as we, we had before. And we can, we can in the software dive into these in, in multiple levels. So they're not just this level. Um, I mean, with, with Zooks, we're pretty restricted in terms of the kind of technology that we're looking at in this space. I mean, we are already filtering down to, to autonomous driving. So we haven't shown you all of the uh, hierarchy that, that goes with these, but basically there is a, there is a hierarchy of multiple levels. And, and this is just one of the levels of that, that um, is a kind of manageable level of, of detail. Um, for what we're looking at here. So, so basically it's, it's AI defined. Okay. Um, so maybe to, to, to move on as well, um, as I was alluding to, we could have a, a little look at, at what the other players are doing in here as well. So we can see um, Amazon, so it's just alphabetical. So, so Amazon is, is second from the top there. Um, what are the, the areas that, that they are active in? And Zooks with the, the Z is at the bottom here. And, and what are the areas that, that they are active in? And what are the, the others? What are the areas that they are, are active in? And here we're looking at and not the whole portfolio for these companies, but the portfolios that, that fall into the, the field of autonomous driving. So yeah, we and we do have a, we have a question here about why we picked Zooks. Um, and is it simply because Amazon acquired them? And I think the, the answer there is yes, because what we want to do is we want to show you what you could have seen if you had looked in advance so that then we can get to the end so that you can, we can talk about here's what you might be looking for moving forward and how you can use these tools in a prospective way. And, and, and any 
in, in for, for any modeling, if it doesn't work for the past, it can't work for the future. Right. Um, and so, this is so really that's important. what we're talking. Right. So if it, 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 I mean, I think that's just you know like the ABCs of predicting. If you can't predict the past, you, there, there's no way you can predict the future. So, um, so the, the, what we're trying to show here, like particularly, is when you look at this chart. So, like, if you have a company that is in this space and they're weak on signaling or cruise control, you know, Zooks is going to be pretty attractive because they have a pretty, a pretty good portfolio there. And for example, you're not going to go out and buy Ford. You're not going to go out and buy GM. You know, but you could go out and buy Zooks. You know, and that's the whole idea of chasing unicorns right well exactly exactly i mean we are looking for these people to basically supplement our portfolio or supplement our, our technology in order to <clears throat> strengthen our position or, or go in a new direction i mean unicorns very often are are excellent at something quite specific they are delivering they are excellent in some particular area and there are many companies like that out there that are, are expert in some particular area. And we want to identify which are the ones that can can give us an advantage to our competitors beyond what we have already or, or um, to achieve the growth or the goals or the development that, that we want to achieve as a, as a company. Um, and we have a question here. We're talking about like clusters so far. You can do this for a single patent, though, right? I mean, if you have exactly, a number, yeah, you can, yeah. Okay. Yep. So we could so do this. Yeah. Yeah, we could Go do ahead. this for an individual patent, uh, a set of patents um, for a for an owner, for a technology, for a a country. Even is something that we've been doing quite recently. That a uh, a few, like you say, people like the EU Commission and and such are interested. You know, um, how is my country even performing and we can we can drill into the details for this as well yeah. so so any level you know and it, and it really is this is great information to i mean certainly if if i was sitting on a board of directors which I, you know i haven't had the opportunity to, to do that yet maybe some point in my career i would but i would think that if you're on a board of directors and you're coming in like uber for example it would be great to know at a glance, okay, we, we've got great patents in driver assistance, environmental scanning, cruise control, navigation, some in signaling, we have nothing in parking assistance. You know, parking is absent and, uh, for Uber, you know, and maybe that's okay for Uber because they're they're driving people around. So you look at that and you say, oh, that's reasonable. It seems like the company is investing where it matters the most. Right. So I'm not, I'm not worried about that. So at a glance, you know, that tells you a whole lot of information very quickly. And that's the key. If you want to get information up the pipeline to the people who can make the decisions, uh, you know, and then the next set of slides, we're going to talk about the buying decisions. But I mean, uh, uh, this is exactly right. I mean, how how to find this kind of information about your competitors? Like, I remember mm -hmm. um, I used to work for a, for a company that makes... Um, uh, solar modules and and cells, one of the the big few, and we spent a huge amount of time in competitive intelligence to understand what it is that our competitors are doing, what it is that we think that they're going to bring to market next, to understand what it is that that we can do to maintain our competitive position, because there is always this this risk, this ever present danger. Of, of being left behind, being left behind by, by our other big uh, players, by Amazon beating us, or even by companies like Zooks, just growing so quickly and becoming a real challenger in a space that um, I think pretty much everyone agrees here is, is gonna at some point massively take off. When, we, when someone really finishes developing the formula for autonomous driving that, that is generally accepted, it will be a massive game changer to not just these companies, but but everyone's way of life, right? Um, right. And if, if someone has the keys to that, then they have the keys to to a huge amount of of growth. Um, and so these companies that are actively betting in this space, they you know, if they don't stay ahead, they they are going to lose out 
extremely quickly. And, and there's going to be players that I'm sure we'll see in the future, even the big established players, probably even the big car brands that will get left behind by some tech company or, or new startup completely taking their place. Yeah. And they're all afraid of that too, I think. And they're, you know, very mindful of that. I think and it's an ever present companies, yeah, yeah, ever present danger. Exactly. For every industry, right? I mean, if, if you're not innovating, if you're not moving forward, then you're falling behind. Um, and, but and it's interesting because it's, it has here before not been an ever present danger for the automotive industry. Cause if you look at the automobile industry up until very recently, uh, the, the pavement has been littered with the bodies of corporations who have tried to become auto companies, right. you know, and that's why I was, you know, Tesla, I was, <laughs> I, I was, you know, sort of like a Tesla hater, as you know, we've had these conversations right. you know, with friends of mine who were invested in Tesla. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're crazy. And I'm a Tesla hater because, you know, history would suggest Tesla was just not going to succeed. Because there's so many companies that tried to become car companies, and it, as it turns out, it's very difficult to make a car. And you know, despite all odds, that company is figuring it out. Now yep. that changes the calculus because now the Fords and the GMs and the Volvos and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, they have competition, and it is becoming an existential threat. Yeah, particularly with these solutions that don't represent a traditional car, right? So Tesla is an example of an electric car. How you design that is going to be different to how you design a traditional um, internal combustion engine car. And here with a with automated transportation, you know, you're not even thinking car anymore, right? You're thinking of solution to point A, point B transportation problem, which the car is is one option for. And and here we could be looking at multiple solutions to to this option. I mean, we we yeah. maybe limit ourselves in even in this analysis to to remove the kind of um, massive drones that that Saudi Arabian government or whomever is is investing in, right? Because these are two point A point B transportation problem solutions yeah. um, that may be equally as as valid when we talk about you know big automated makers being left behind in the future. Yeah. So, Will, I think we're, our audience, there's, there's, their you know, minds are are racing here. Um, we have uh, Kimberly is talking about, well, this could be a licensing, use for licensing strategies. And yes, it absolutely could be. And um, then she also asks, uh, it, can it also be used on a, uh, can also this be used to decide if a portfolio is on strategy as well as it as shown here for uber like so i think the question here is um if you're trying to look at a whole portfolio can you identify if a portfolio that you might be trying to license is one that is uh, a good match for the company so is the portfolio on strategy for what the company needs to actually acquire rights to yeah, I mean, there's there's kind of two parts of that, or maybe two ways to think about that. I mean, here we're looking at what are the gaps a company has in order to achieve a goal that they appear to want to achieve, which could well indicate that they might need access to, to certain technologies, right? Or it might mean that they're maybe not interested in that, that area, like the example you were making with Uber, maybe parking isn't a particular important part of, of their business. They just pull up on the roadside, so maybe they don't need need access to that. But it could be here, like Zooks, for example, that, that it is an area that, that Amazon sees that, that they need to have access to their assets. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. the other way of looking at that is to say, does a company already have technologies that they are maybe investing in or bringing to market, which maybe require the access to um, previous or prior art in order to, you know, effectively or, you know, legally bring to market, right? So we can look at, does a particular patent within a portfolio, is it a precursor to the technology that, that this company is actively developing? And, and this can be a very, very good indication that, that this is a, a likely licensing um, 
or even enforcement uh, opportunity. And uh, very often when we sit down and do that kind of analysis with people, we identify patents in their portfolio that say, okay, this looks like a good candidate for, for licensing to this company. I would say about 50% of the time I, I talk with someone about that, they know the patent that I'm talking about just from, from us having the discussion. Um, mm -hmm. Because a lot of companies, they don't license a lot of things out. So the few that they do, they are aware of. Um, and it's often very easy to identify what those might be. Um, and so this can be a really good way of, of identifying those opportunities as well. Either gaps that they have that might need filling or things that they might need access to based on their, their, their ongoing development. Mm, and then we also have an, another uh, statement really sort of question as well. Th this helps a company buy patents period not just necessarily from a unicorn, uh, and that is correct. The the, yeah. the business level doesn't really factor in. We just are talking about unicorns simply because that's historically where you see entire companies wind up getting acquired in the tech sector because of their technology, because of their patent portfolios. Um, and you see so many of the large tech companies right now sitting on so much cash um, that, you know, you you wonder. I wonder. Maybe this is going to be. We're going to need to probably do an, uh, a webinar just on this topic. Coming out of this COVID nineteen pandemic, as more and more businesses crater, startups crater, small businesses crater, um, you're, we're going to be left with a, a, a top heavy marketplace. I think potentially, um, and those startups that that last. Are they going to really be strong? How strong are they going to be? The big companies are going to succeed. They're going to be probably sitting on even more cash because, you know, like the Amazons of the world, right? they seem to be doing really well, um, even in the pandemic. So maybe there will be a buying spree here uh, of these startup technology companies. Discount you know, startups. <laughs> it, it Just very they well start may. to fail at the end, be like, oh, we'll take it, that. <laughs> it, it, it very well may be, you know, and I'm, you're starting to hear people talk about that. Um, and uh, I, I, so, you know, th this webinar may be quite prescient, you know? Yep. So, so. Um, yeah, maybe we can we can jump on a little bit as well. And um, sure, sure. So, I mean, there's a couple of, of uh, other slides in here for, for 2018 before we look at the, the future. I mean, here just comparing more directly the, the what we've looked at in the past slide of what are the areas that Amazon has and what are the areas that, that Zooks has and how do they overlap with each other? And what are the areas where, where Zooks is going to contribute to, to, to Amazon in terms of this uh, autonomous driving space? Um, and I mean, here is a lot of what we, we've seen in the, the last analysis, basically. And we've just discussed at some length, so, so maybe it makes sense to, to move beyond this as well. But we can see here very, very strongly the, the areas, the cruise control, the navigation, uh, or the cruise control, the signaling, um, that uh, Zooks will add something, and the areas where Amazon is already very strong in, in the navigation in the middle there that I mentioned, that they already have mm -hmm. assets where they're going to, the Zooks acquisition is going to supplement those and um, yeah, help mm -hmm. them move forward. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if we jump on then. Uh, so then this is where we started. So this is the picture in 2018. Um, and so this is what maybe Amazon would have been looking at when they were thinking about making their decision. And if we go one slide further, and maybe we can switch between these a couple of times, we can see how this industry has progressed in the last year and a half. So the state today. So if we click to the next slide, then we can see it's on the same axis. All of these companies have moved out to the right. The Toyota, Ford, GM, Alphabet, Uber, Bosch. We just click that back and forth once so we can see. So we can see 2018 and then and then today. And we can see Zooks has built out their portfolio a little bit further and further increase their quality in, in, in that time. So going from, from five there to, to about eight, um, still with a very small portfolio, but, but increasing further. 
So identifying them back then in, in 2018 was still extremely possible. Even earlier, it would have been possible to, to identify them. But I mean, it seems like a very good bet looking at the information that's available to us um, today. And then we can say, okay, what is what is uh, the combined uh, Amazon and Zooks going to look like once they, they merge together? Um, and so they will be a real contender in the field in terms of bringing those, those assets together. Small, yes, but very strong. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you you want you want to be much higher on this uh, on this y axis y axis. Yeah. So um, so the question that we had then, um, I mean, this is like you've said, like the audience, some of the audience has said, you know, why look at, at Zooks? Well, we we know Zooks has been acquired by Amazon. We know this is of interest to them. So it, it becomes a, a nice example to, to use as a case study. But then we can say, you know, who else might be next? So um, we did a little uh, looking for companies which are small in the space of, um, in the space of autonomous driving and how are they developing over time. So you can see here uh, the patent asset index on the left, the, 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 the quality, the portfolio size on the right, the, the quantity, and we can see the development of, of these guys' portfolio. And you can see Zooks here in the, in the orange um, with you know, first publications in 2016 and then really serious increase over the years. Um, and then there are, are, are a few others in here that maybe they've been around longer, or, or maybe they're they're more recent and and growing, um, but but these might be the people that we would we would look for those companies that in the most recent years have really been improving their portfolio in the space, um, and we can see for example you know if we look at just the number of patents, uh, Fergo this this blue line is is near the top, but if we look on on the left they they they're not so high. Kind of similar for for too simple as well. See, they have the largest number of of assets on the on the right, but they're what's that number number three on the left? But but growing very very quickly since 2017, having achieved this 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 position within this this set of people, and then there are the ones that you know only appeared in the last couple of years. This this deep map uh, Innovis, for example. Um, so by looking for these that are, are new to the space, are increasing very quickly, we can then say, okay, these are the ones that we need to look at. These are the ones that we need to understand. Are they gonna um, are they gonna falter? Do we not have to worry about them? Are they gonna grow and be a competitor, or do they have something that that, that we want and and we want to acquire? So too simple might be something really. I mean, that fits what you were just talking about, because, you know, in 2017 to 2020, they're, they're like uh, shot up, right? you know, like not quite like Zooks, but on, on their portfolio size, they certainly did. Um, and, you know, so they could well be be next. Um, I, I was mentioning, you know, just before the call started that uh, um Someone was showing me a, a comparison of, of startups filing behavior and uh, their investors funding and how once they get funding, they can suddenly increase their, their portfolio massively because they have this money that they, they then you know, need to secure assets in order to um, you know, really make the most of it. So you know, it can be introducing other data sets to this as well, can be really informative as well. If we, if we do a little digging into Too Simple, we might find that they, they got their you know, Series A funding in 2017 and said, okay, now is the time we need to file for these patents because if we don't do it, we're gonna be too late. And you have this transition from um, you know, trade secrets into real tangible assets or real mm -hmm. assets. Um, yeah, so I mean, these are the players that, that might be next. We can see uh, they, they all kind of fit the, the growth pattern that, that we might want to see. Um, but we, what we could do as well is, is maybe uh, dig uh, deeper to this to say, um, what are the areas that they are in? Um, and, and then if we, were, if we were Amazon again, let's pretend, 
what are the areas that we are still missing? You know, we've made our Zooks acquisition, we've massively increased our, our, our portfolio in terms of the, the communication between the cars and the infrastructure. Um, and, and now what else are we, what else are we missing? Um, and I was, uh, again, before we started pointing out an article that I just wrote, in, uh, read in Forbes, um, with someone proposing that Amazon is now missing uh, LiDAR technology from their, um, from their portfolio. And maybe that is the next thing that they're going to have to go out and, and acquire. Um, and just looking at these, there are a couple of companies that seem to be active in this, in this space, which they, they could then start to consider. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this uh, so, Luminar Tech and, and Innovis, for example. Yeah. So I just pulled up two simple as we're as we're talking here <laughs> now, and they're a self-driving truck company developing technology that allows them to drive from uh, depot to depot without human intervention. They are a, a private company, not publicly traded. Uh, total amount of funding, according to Crunchbase, is just under 300 million. Um, so that's why they would have such large portfolio for cruise control, um, since they are, uh, you know, like a point-to-point -point, uh, right. delivery truck company. Um, so in navigation, they also uh, drivers, you know, so that that portfolio makes an awful lot of sense. When you know that that's uh, you know a self-driving truck company, right? And yeah. and of course, picking up that information is is key to that decision making, right? So patents on their own are, are not going to give you the information to to make the final decision on um, what to acquire, but they can bring to light information that you wouldn't find elsewhere. Um, we we did a we did a webinar with with one of our uh, customers from from uh, Eaton, the yeah electrification company and uh, industry company, um, and and they told a story about you know looking for um, someone to acquire in a particular field in a particular uh, country, and and identifying someone that they were already partnering with on something else, but who was active in this space in this country that they didn't know about, and it was only the patents and looking at you know where they were filing for those, where they were inventing them, that alluded them to to this being someone that they could work with that they wouldn't have otherwise identified. Um, yeah. And so that kind of insight into how a company is is operating. Um, is something that you, you know, patents of highly detailed public information that we, we rarely get insights into to how a, a company is, is really operating. I mean, public companies yeah. we sometimes get like investor reports or something like this, but even these, you know, they're highly glossed. You know, they, they're telling us the picture that uh, the company wants the investors to hear, which can be very, very... Uh, well, I wouldn't say misleading. I'm sure there's probably a, a, a rule against it being misleading, but certainly on the positive side. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, um, well, well, that's great. So, I think that's our last slide, right? Well, that's the last slide of the the analysis. So, there 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 is um, one other slide in there that I I did want to uh, share with people. I did want to um, okay. mention. Um, and and that's just the the upcoming um, academy series that, that we are running. Um, the our, our leader of the academy, um, who is in our German head office, uh, Carsten, he has a, a lectureship at a, a German university here, teaching uh, pattern analytics to to graduate students. Um, and so we're running this 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 six um, session, um, so six sessions over six weeks. Um, going from the the very basics of of patent analytics, why it makes sense, why um, you might want to get into it, what are the kind of information sets that that are out there, and how you might be able to use them, to you know quite advanced uh, manipulation of the of the data, um, and how to get the insights for say licensing or M and A activities or portfolio management that that you might need to do to um, yeah, help your organization or, or service your clients. And these will be um, 
uh, CLE accredited as as well. So we we welcome the uh, attorneys on the on the line that 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 might want to uh, join us for this as well. All these six sessions six sessions that's a tongue twister individually but uh but also you know if if those who know nothing about patents know nothing about patent analytics you're more than welcome to to join as well and, and actually the first sessions are, are really designed to to bring people into the fold who want to explore more in terms of getting insights from from patent analytics and i i know like I was mentioning earlier in, in the previous role I had looking at um, strategic decision making for our R&D, um, this kind of information would have been so helpful in order to have. Um, and I know we tried to do it, but it was really challenging without a, a guide to show us the, the, the right direction. And so this is what we, we try and do with this with this series. Great. Well, well, thank you very much. I think that was a, a fascinating uh, webinar. I, I uh, really enjoyed it, and we'll have to, uh, you know, circle back with this and and, uh, and see, you know, what what happens if any of those companies do wind up getting uh, looked at or acquired, and uh, how they grow so into, in the future. So this time, you're actually going to go out and invest in Too Simple that you didn't invest in in Moderna that's the... <laughs> well you, well Moderna would have been easy because they were publicly traded you know ah, so, right <laughs> yeah but yeah so that's why I was looking at too simple if they were publicly traded then I would have at least put something on them but, so oh well anyway all right opportunities lost <laughs> so, all right well well thank, thank you, you very, very much, much and Thank you all for joining us here today, and we hope you have a good rest of your day. We hope to have you join us again here in the near future. Uh, take care, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.